Hey guys, this is Nathan and welcome to the Gaming 4. Today in this Unturned Map Editor tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the nodes. Now, I've done this in the past, but uh, a lot has changed, so I'm going to be going over all of them. I'll be going over the simpler ones a little more quickly, and then you know I'll leave some time for some of the newer ones at the end. So let's start out um, by where the nodes are. So the nodes are in the Environment tab, and they're the very last one over here. Now these are pretty useful, uh, pretty much, I think Nelson's pretty much just thrown random sort of tools in here, but uh, I'll just show you how to use them. So the location one, very simple, uh, place down this red square, uh, you can see it from pretty far away, and once you place it down, you add a location name over here. So I'm just going to put name there, and pretty much what this is, is when you render the map, so let's say I bake satellite, the name of that location will show up where it is on the map. So I'm going to put another one down over here. I'm going to call it test one. So we're just going to be remembering these ones so that when I do look at the map file, we will be able to see it there. So let's move on before we look at the map file. Let's uh, look at the safe zone. Now this is a pretty interesting one. It's actually used in arena maps. And pretty much what it does is anybody inside this circle does not get hurt and it used to be that they couldn't switch weapons or do something like that. I think you can now, but you can't get hurt essentially inside this safe zone from zombies or players doesn't really matter. And so you can change the radius of this. Um, I think the height button, what that means is um, the height will go straight up as high as it can go. If that's off, it'll be like in a normal sphere shape um, just around that area. Obviously, guys, if you guys want to uh, deselect and select these, and if you want to delete them, make sure you have the right one selected. Click around the middle of it, and then you can press delete if you want to get rid of it. But I'm going to leave one down just for testing purposes. So now we get to purchase. This is one of the more complicated ones, but it's used in horde modes, or it was used in horde modes. Um, the creation of horde modes has been disabled. So you can still play them, but you can't create any new ones. So pretty much how they work is they've got the radius sort of thing going on as well. Um, it's also a sphere. You can kind of see how it curves up a bit. It doesn't really show it all the way. Not sure why. But um, for this one, you've got two things to fill in over here besides the radius. And so you've got the ID of the item you want to buy. So let's say 99. I think that's a Cobra. And then you've got the cost of what you want to pay for it. So let's say Cobra for $100. So obviously when you deselect them, it's white. But uh, So this is used for only horde mode. It only works correctly in horde mode. And that is because in survival, you can't get the points that you need to spend on it. So don't put these in your survivals. These are used only for horde mode. Okay, They do not work any other way. Maybe somebody could make a mod where it works that way. But if you don't have it or whatever, it doesn't work. So pretty much for the radius... Anybody standing inside this radius will see the option to buy the weapon, and you press F to buy it. Okay, moving on to the arena. This one, as it sort of seems, is used only for arena maps. If you place this down anywhere else, it's not really going to be used. The map is just going to ignore it, pretty much. So, pretty much how this works is obviously a larger circle, and it's got a radius on it, and the radius is freaking huge. And so, pretty much, this defines the area that the boundaries for the arena as they close in that it defines one of the areas that it will close into now you can have multiples of these so let's say I've got an arena map and I've got one there one there and one there so that'll pretty much say it'll choose one of those and it'll go with it that game next game it could choose another one but it's sort of a randomized thing and when you place these down you're gonna want these to be as big as you want the boundary to start so this is not the end position of the boundary. That's the beginning position of the boundary. So when you place these down, you want to make them huge. You want to make them completely encompass your map. You can even send them outside of your map a bit and have them go into, you know, no man's land. Now, these are kind of hard to select once you place them down. And the best way I've found to do that is zoom out as far back as you can and select. And I've seen, I've gotten one. It's this one right here. It's hard to tell, but... If you tend to zoom out all the way, you can sort of find the centers of them and select them. Another way that really helps is making it big to start out with. Actually, it doesn't do anything. Never mind. So yeah, those are tricky to select, but uh, it's doable. 
Let's see, where are the other ones? It's also helpful to know where they center into. Alright, now for the next one. So this one is pretty much the opposite of a safe zone. It's called a dead zone. And what happens inside of the dead zone is you start taking radiation damage. So what the dead zone does is it starts uh, taking down your radiation counter. And that's the counter that increases whenever you get hit by a zombie. And so pretty much when that goes all the way down to zero, you start taking normal sickness damage from you know just having too much radiation and so that piles it on real quick obviously these are all color coded so you can tell what they are from far away this also has the radius bar um, you can make them pretty big pretty small and it'll pretty much only affect those in that area and this is circular as well so it won't like it doesn't go straight up into the sky okay so now for the second to last one getting into some of the more complicated ones here we have the airdrop this is actually one of the new ones that was added uh, before the Russia map update, but um, that's how the new guns were introduced. So pretty much how this works is you place one down, and that is, it pretty much marks a spot that an airdrop could happen. So you can have multiples of these, obviously. It'll just, every time a, a airdrop is going to happen, it'll choose randomly between them. So this does also come with a spawn ID, and this is going to correspond to the item, pre-made item sets. So let's go over to spawns and let's go to items. So you know how we've got the spawn IDs and there's like the huge tables and stuff. That's what um, that ID on there is for. So pretty much you can choose whatever you want to be dropped in these crates. And it'll choose multiples of them as well. So I think by default it's about like five or something that they drop at a time. So if you choose like a, a basic military weapons airdrop, it'll drop about five military weapons at a time. And of course, it'll choose them randomly out of the spawn ID you chose. Now, spawn ID zero is nothing. So make sure you change that because if you don't, it won't uh, spawn anything for you. So I'm going to put down like four. I'm not exactly sure what that is and you know the chances of me seeing this happen is going to be super rare because these spawn drops these uh, airdrops are super rare but uh, that's that now we get to the most complicated one and the one I actually understand the least so I've done some research and I found some effect stuff so pretty much how this works is it works like a bunch of the other ones it's got a radius um, but it also has width height length effect ID, no water, no lighting, or you can change the shape from a box to a sphere. Now, sphere only uses radius. The box uses, it doesn't even use radius, it uses width and height and length. So the box is definitely easier to customize because you can fit uh, spaces a little better. Now, in terms of uh, what this is used for, it's used to do some sort of special effects on the area inside. Now, of course, you can make these as huge as you want. You could cover an entire map with this sort of thing. It really just depends on what you want to do as a map maker. But um, one common use of this is using the no water and no lighting. Now, I'm not really sure how what these effect IDs actually do. Um, I did look it up. So if you look up unturned effect IDs, Actually, if we go to the ID list, it'll be in here. So if we go in the normal list and we go to effect, these are all of the effect IDs. Now, it doesn't make sense. So you can put these in this area. So like, let's say I want to have um, ID 75, wheat zero, okay? It's not really going to do anything. So I'm not exactly sure how to use the effect ID section of this. It really doesn't make sense to me. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how to use it. So besides that, we've got these two. And these are really easy to use, actually. So if we want to use no lighting, pretty much what this is going to do is it's going to make this area completely pitch black. And it will fade in and out as you enter and leave this. So it's, it's nice for transitions and stuff. We'll test that later. Um, the second one is no water and let's see I placed one here and I'm going to 
there we go. I'll put it on the side, and I'm going to make it a pretty large sphere. And I'm going to pretty much cover that entire water area, and I'm going to make it no water. And supposedly that interacts with the water in a way. We'll find out when we test it. So um, I will try out one of the effect IDs over here. Let's find a good one. Maybe it'll do something. So let's say Alien Dynamic 95. So a lot of these actually, a lot of these effects are sort of used in like normal items inside the world. So that's pretty much what they are. So like some of these could be breaking particles like when you shoot it you know the particles that come off um, that is probably for the particles when you chop down a tree or maybe the tree falling something like that so that's what these are used for I'm not sure at all how they're supposed to relate to these effect IDs maybe they don't maybe they do I guess we'll have to find out by experimentation but I haven't tried all of them so I'm just gonna put that one which is alien effect and we'll see if it does anything. So let's move on and let's actually get in this world and let's try this out. Now I don't have an exact spawn for this so obviously I spawn in the middle of the air that's pretty much what happens by default. You don't take fall damage either when you spawn in the air so it's not such a bad thing. So let's start out by looking on the map. Here we are we've got name and test one those are the two location nodes obviously those worked. Now, the problem with testing these other ones is that they are invisible. So I'm going to have to run around here a little bit and find each of them and, you know, then show you guys what they do. Okay, guys, so I seem to have found um, that effect node that we put down. So it seems that um, this effect node creates certain noises. Now, of course, I'm just experimenting with this myself. But as you guys can see, there is a constant hitting noise happening. Now, I'm pretty sure that doesn't have to do anything with any of these effect numbers. So this is going to be one of those things we're going to have to find the resources for and figure out how to use. But so that's pretty cool. So let's find some of the other things. All right, guys. So here I found the buy location. So the purchase node is right around here. As you guys can see, I've got the option to buy a Cobra for a hundred credits now I'm pressing F and normally it would place a Cobra in one of my gun slots but that is not happening because obviously I don't have any credits as I said it only works in horde mode so you know don't place these in your survival maps you're just gonna annoy people and it's not really gonna do anything alright so here I found the dead zone um, I'm not gonna spend too much time in it it's right in front of me here as you guys see as I enter it you can see the skull and crossbones shows up there look at my radiation counter it's going down super fast when it hits the bottom I will start taking damage because of radiation poisoning now that's the last of them we put around here obviously we can't see the arena ones because this is not an arena map and it doesn't work that way um, we also cannot really experience experience the uh, safe zone because there's nobody here oh well there's the safe zone actually I guess you can see, see that you're in a safe zone as you guys can also see I can't punch and yeah that's pretty much another way to keep players from hurting each other inside these so that was the safe zone um, the last two things we need to find is the other effects with the darkness here we are as you guys can see the dark is closing in on us it's getting completely black even though it is light outside and this may be as dark as it gets I'm not sure looks like this is about as dark as it's gonna get so it's almost pitch black out there you can still see the Sun which is pretty freaking awesome but uh yeah this is pretty much it now obviously it's still light outside and as I get out of the zone the darkness starts to clear so that's really cool for you know making effects on your maps it'll definitely make your map very very unique if you incorporate those in some good ways now let's go experiment with the water one um, this is actually one I've not experimented with and you know I'm not really sure what it does so as you guys can see it appears that there's still water down there so it didn't get rid of the water that's something I thought it might do as you guys can also see it's still taking my oxygen so um, I'm not sure exactly what's up with that as well so I'm not sure what uh, that effect does um, that'll be another one we have to experiment with but you can apply it if you want to so you know I guess it's up to you alright guys so that's pretty much it for this unturned map better tutorial hopefully you guys learned something about the nodes um, 
they've been changing a lot and you know it's a, there's a good chance I'll have to do another one of these videos because as Nelson adds all this new stuff you know I'll be having to update you guys on what has changed so anyway guys hopefully you enjoyed this please like the video if you did and please subscribe if you want to see some more I will see you all later